Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy. Today I'm gonna to be comparing two nozzles for the Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer as they pertain to printing miniatures and terrain. Now I did a video before this in which I just got my feet wet with the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle and I printed out some miniatures and showed how they look and they turned out pretty good. So if you wanna see that video, be sure to click the card above my head or check the link in the description so you can see that video. But at the end of that video, I said that I wanted to get the 0.2 millimeter nozzle so that I can compare the quality between the two. And that's exactly what I have been able to do. So over here on my left, I have some miniatures and one piece of terrain that was printed with the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. And then over here, I have the figures and the miniatures from the previous video that was printed with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Now for these miniatures, I did make sure that I used the highest quality setting that I could for the 0.4 millimeter nozzle at the smallest possible layer height, which is 0.08 and then for the miniatures over here I did the same thing except this time the layer height went down to 0.06 and I made sure to pick the highest quality profile that Bamboo Lab had available for this particular nozzle so that I can compare the two. And when it comes to this piece of terrain, I printed this in the standard regular profile setting for the 0.2 millimeter nozzle, same way that I did for the ones that were printed with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So if you're curious about the nozzles on this particular printer, this is what it looks like. It's this whole assembly right here. And it's actually really easy to swap the nozzle. You don't need any tools at all. So really all you have to do is, it has this uh, covering right here on the tool head and it just snaps into place. So all you have to do is just take that off and then you take off the silicone sock and then the nozzle is held in place by these two clasps. It's like hugging it. So all you have to do is just undo those and then this is magnetic. So you can just pull it out of its place, take the next nozzle, stick it right where the old nozzle was. And again, it's magnetic. And once it's into place, you'll be able to close those two clasps and it'll hold on to the nozzle securely. You'll know exactly when you get it right. But you also might be like me and you might have to fiddle with it a little bit in order to get it in that perfect position because you shouldn't have to force those latches closed. Everything should be nice and easy. And once you get used to it and you get fast with it, you'll be able to swap out a nozzle for this printer in like a minute. So it's not difficult to do at all. Then another thing that you have to make sure that you do inside of the bamboo slicer is make sure that you have the 0.2 millimeter profile selected. So you go up to where your printer is and then you act like you're gonna add a brand new printer to the slicer. And then you'll be able to see the Bamboo Lab A1 along with some different profiles for the nozzle. So you can select the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. And then once that is done, you can go to the devices tab. And then in that section, there's gonna be something called printer parts. And then you specify from there as well that you're using the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. And if you forget to do that, and you tell the printer that you're using a 0.2 millimeter nozzle in the regular printing profile, but not in the printer parts tab, then the slicer will warn you that you need to switch that over just so you don't accidentally mess any Thing up. So I'm glad that that redundancy is in place. All right, so now let's run some comparisons between these minis. And I'm gonna start here with some close-up photos that I took of some of these miniatures, starting with this big guy here. Now he was one of the figures that I really liked because it's a miniature, but you know, he's got more girth to him so you can see more detail. And speaking of seeing more detail, as you look at these pictures, you will see that the 0.2 millimeter nozzle variant, this figure came out looking cleaner than the 0.4 as expected. Now, as far as printing time is concerned, the 0.2 millimeter nozzle was able to print this figure in like twice the amount of time as the 0.4. So the 0.4 took one hour, then the 0.2 took around two hours, maybe even a little bit more. So you definitely have to wait longer for your print to be done. Let's take a look at another one. This one is a bugbear. I think that's the name of this particular figure. And looking at him nice and close, Again, it is a little bit cleaner on the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. Now on this particular figure, I can make out 
um, the cleaner aspects on like this emblem that's on his chest, kind of like something that He-Man has, you know, like a harness or something. And I can see that the center of that looks a little bit cleaner when it was printed with the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. And then just the definition in general just seems to pop out a little bit more. It's not a massive difference, at least not to my eye. But if I were to kind of just mix these up a bit, and then look at them and see like, hmm, which one is the 0.2 and which one is the 0.4? I can immediately tell that this one is the 0.2. This time by looking at his weapon, the ax here, I can see um, less layer lines on his ax with this particular figure. So again, two for two, the 0.2 millimeter nozzle came out looking nicer and it came out looking cleaner. But not everything worked out the way that I wanted it to. Take this guy here. He was another one of my favorites, this uh, sort of wood elf looking guy that's smiling and waving with the stick. Um, he needed supports to be printed. And when I tried to print him with the 0.2 millimeter nozzle, one of the organic tree supports failed, which is why his right hand looks really squished and is stringy underneath, but everything else printed out just fine. I still think that it was good enough to at least do this comparison between them so that we can take a look at them. And then even like looking at his face, which was one of the details that stood out most to me for the 0.4 nozzle, because I liked the fact that I was able to see his happy expression. And looking at the 0.2 millimeter nozzle, again, it's a little bit clearer. It's a little less, well, like blurry, you know? Again, not a night and day difference, but definitely a difference nonetheless. So if you're trying to get the highest quality possible, that 0.2 millimeter nozzle is definitely going to do it. And then looking on the back, looking at his whole getup here, his costume, the individual ruffles, maybe this is like fur on his top portion, um, they look more defined on the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. They look more separated, whereas on the 0.4, they look a little bit together, They're almost like a little bit fused together. So again, the 0.2 definitely worked out for the best in this regard. So that's kind of how it worked with the miniature comparisons. And because these look really good printed in FDM, especially with this sort of beige off-white filament, I think it just looks the best that way. I wanted to see how this looked compared to resin, because that's the term that I tend to hear sometimes when it comes to a really good FDM quality print. It's resin-like quality. So I did that with one of these figures that did not require supports. Now, one of these was printed with resin and the other one was printed with the Bamboo Lab filament. Now, you already know which one is which because this is the color that I like for the filament. But take a look at these two photos side by side and then you tell me that if you did not know which one was printed with resin and which one was printed with FDM, which one do you think was printed with resin? And even if you know which one was printed with resin, do you think that the difference between the two is that much different. I can tell which one is resin. I can tell that this one is resin. Maybe it's because I'm the one who did it, so of course I know. But if I'm looking as hard as I can with an objective eye, I can see that there are some remnants of FDM, small little like layer lines, a little bit of just, you know, that, that filament look that comes with this, but it's so incredibly subtle and it's not that noticeable when you're not looking for it. The biggest way that I can tell is on this shield here. So this shield is just completely clean on the resin model, but looking at the one that has filament, then I can definitely start to see the faintest of layer lines on this particular shield. But the differences between these two Honestly, it's not that big. I mean, the resin, if you had to give the edge to any of them, yeah, the resin one looks a little bit better, but it is definitely not a huge difference in this particular example. And I would say that if you wanted to print miniatures like this that didn't require supports, and you had like these two miniatures here, if your choices were to, you know, go through the whole poisonous route with resin versus just printing this in a couple of hours on the FDM printer, I think that the results that you got, that you will get on this would be 
worth it to not have to, you know, deal with the extra post-processing and the gloves and the mask and, you know, ventilation and all that stuff. I'm not saying that it's just as great as resin. I'm not saying it's a replacement for resin, but I'm saying that in this example that I was able to see, the differences are not that great in this regard. Now let's take a look at the terrain. So I printed only one of these with the 0.2 millimeter nozzle because it took so much longer to print. This one right here took me about eight hours to print. Just this took about eight hours. In comparison to when I printed it with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, it took about two and a half hours. So the amount of time that it took drastically went up in printing this. But I can say that there is a very noticeable difference between the two. And I picked this particular tile because it has these skulls in the background. And the skulls came out looking more defined on the 0.2 than it did on the 0.4. And then the tops of these bricks here on the 0.4, you can definitely see the swirliness of the layer lines and things like that when it's printed flat. But on this one, although it's still there, it's not as pronounced as it is on the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And then for both of these, the first layer on the bottom, they are almost just indistinguishable. You know, they were perfect first layers and they look absolutely fantastic. But in this example, because it took so much longer to print one of these, and the time that I printed one of these, I could have printed three of the regular ones with 0.4. I wouldn't say that the trade-off was worth it for this, but if all that you want is a higher quality product, then yeah, you're definitely going to get it with the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. But like I said before, you're going to have to wait for it. So I think these were decent examples for miniatures, but what if you wanted to print something bigger? with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle at the highest quality profile possible that Bamboo Lab provides. What will your figures look like then? Don't worry, I got you. I want you to feast your eyes on this statue. This is a Wonder Woman statue by Eastman. And I printed this with the 0.2 millimeter nozzle on the highest possible quality settings. This came out in three different pieces, no supports necessary. And each of these three sections took between 15 and 17 hours to print total. And I printed each part with 8% infill and I used the new cross hatch infill type that Bamboo Lab is now promoting and it turned out just amazing. Look at the close up for this figure. And I even kept one or two of the strings from the filament on this model, just so that you can know for sure, yeah, he printed this in FDM. He's not trying to trick us. This came out looking so smooth, so absolutely gorgeous. And trying to find the layer lines on this figure is near impossible. Can you find it in some areas? Yes, you can. You catch the legs in the right light, you'll see a line here or there. You look at the shield in the right position, yeah, you'll be like, hmm, that doesn't quite look like resin. But you tell me this, if you were to have this printed out and placed on your shelf, would you look at this and say, you are an inferior statue because you weren't printed with resin? Or would you go, dang, that looks really good for FDM. I can totally just see myself painting that thing up and it's gonna look amazing. I think the second option would be what most people pick. Even looking at this flat base here, just, oh, it's just so smooth. Layer lines are just so negligible. This came out looking amazing, okay? And I've printed plenty of resin figures, a lot of different resin statues. And when I look at this model, and I'm gonna look at her again, if you told me that this came out of a resin printer and I didn't hold it or anything, I don't see how light it is, and it's like, here you go. Printed this with a sort of off-white pink resin. What do you think? I would say, that looks really good. Now I know it's not printed in resin. 
I can see some lines on the back of the shield. I can see that sort of trademark shininess on her skin. This is something that you typically don't get with resin that looks quite like this. There can be a reflection from resin, but you know, FDM just has like this look to it. You know, it's that plastic, it's the plastic look. But I would not be upset if this came out of my resin printer, the way that it's looking now, as smooth as it does, there was no supports, the hair looks fantastic. I can see the definition of her face. This is amazing. Printed on this machine. Now it took over two days worth of printing altogether, but it didn't take very much filament to do it, but it's just, ah, uh, it's beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. So. My conclusion on this 0.8 millimeter nozzle and whether or not you should get it, I say, yeah, you definitely should if you're thinking about printing something with the most detail as possible. And before I forget, I also printed out this little keychain license plate of the out of time license plate from Back to the Future. Looks similar to what I have up there. Not exactly, but it's similar. Printed this with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle on just a regular quality setting. And the letters just came out very nice and clean. Used the AMS for this, California, nice cursive letters, came out nice and clean. There was no bleeding, no nothing. This came out beautiful for the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. So if you're looking to do stuff like that, or if you're looking to do larger things like this, or miniatures, and you're really trying to nail that detail, you can get this nozzle along with a nice, beautiful filament like this one here. And then I'm telling you, you're not gonna be disappointed with it. And by the way, there were no failures for this particular model, no failures at all. The only failure that I came across was this guy in the tree supports coming loose. Um, but they were also designed that way, especially so they can come off really, really easily. So that probably didn't help too much. But beyond that, I've had no problems at all. So yeah, that was my experience with the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. I think it's like $12 or something from Bamboo Lab. So it's not expensive. And I think that it is definitely a worthy addition to your accessory arsenal. If you get a printer like this. So that's it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.